Welcome back to our study about evil. And what we've been looking at is good versus evil. Now, previously, we already done what the world today is doing. Good is evil and evil is good. But we're looking at pretty much a definition of evil versus a definition of good. And we're up to number 26. And we have one more day, one more study of good versus evil. If you take your Bibles to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Now, I'm going to tell you, I believe this is the number 20th video, uh, video 20th audio. One may have got lost on, but I got number 20 listed. This is number 20. Do you know how many videos or audios you got to listen to this study to get it complete? You got to get 19 and this number 20. You can't get number five and, oh, I got the story. You can't get number three, four, and five. Oh, I got the story. You can't get seven, eight, nine. And, oh, I got the story. Oh, I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You got to get it all. Because when we're looking at the word evil, and when we started this study, and I'll come back to the beginning, let's look at three verses in the Bible. Job chapter 2, verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one the foolish woman speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord? And shall we not receive evil? Isaiah 45, 7. I, God speaking, form light, create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Lamentations 3.38, out of the mouth of the Most High perceive not evil and good. Well, let me tell you something. Evil is sin. But God doesn't sin. <coughs> so, evil's not sin. And yet, evil is sin. Evil is a confusing word. As I've said before and used the illustration, a marijuana plant out in a field somewhere is not evil. Okay? Now listen to me. Now you pick that marijuana plant and other plants of marijuana and you dry them and do whatever it takes to be taken that you will put it in cigarette paper and smoke it all right now marijuana has become e evil even though america and some states say now you can smoke it i don't care what america says it's a sin it's evil when you take the marijuana plant that's not evil and you use it for drug activity that's evil that's a sin and when you go to the doctor one time and you get tests and and you find out that your brain has been fried because of marijuana smoking your fried brain is the evil consequence of smoking marijuana now there's another case god creates evil in a way that he creates a judgment circumstances because of man's sin you're driving home on a highway and a person who's drunk hits your car and you end up in the hospital now you didn't drink you were coming home from work you were coming home from school but you were innocent you were hit by a, a driver under the influence of intoxicating substance Being hit by that driver and ended up in the hospital and all the activity happens after that. That's evil. But you did not sin. Coming home from school, coming home from dropping off your mother, coming home or going to work. That's not a sin. 
and God allowing that that driver under the influence of intoxicating substance hitting you. Whether it was the devil, God allowed them Job one or two, or God did it for the purpose of the chastisement or whatever. That's evil. Now we did a previous study: evil is good and good is evil. I'll tell you what is evil is when, all right, the, 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 the person under the influence of intoxicating liquor go gets a lawyer, and they fight against you. That well, you shouldn't been there in your car, and you shouldn't been there on the road, and had you not been there, the, the accident would never happen. Now they're trying to make what you were doing, which is good. They're trying to make you evil. That's wrong. So we got number 20. You need all 20 videos to get this study. So we're at Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man, there's good, out of the good treasure of his heart, Bringeth forth that which is good. Good, good produces good. An evil man, evil, that's what we're looking at, out of the evil treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Why did I say that dirty word out of my mouth? Because that's the evil that you put in your heart. You put it there. And what you put in is what's going to come out. Listen, we have, I think it's Mondays and Fridays, we have the garbage men come by here and pick up our garbage. They pick up all the garbage on our street and other streets. And it's old, decomposed, Garbage. You know what garbage is. And when they get to the to the dump or wherever they, they dump our garbage, a facility, whatever, when they open the back of that dump uh, that 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 dump truck, that garbage truck, money ain't gonna come flying out of that back of that truck. You don't put garbage in a garbage truck and then get to where you're going and expect to find money and riches and fame. That's God's law. That's God's rule. And if a Christian does what the Bible tells him to do, and he goes out and witnesses, and he goes out and, and studies the Bible, and he goes and tries to help Christians grow, and he tries to help some some people who have no money, and he attends church like he's supposed to, and he does what God prescribes by the Bible. That's good. And when he gets home to heaven, you know what he's going to get? He's going to get gold, silver, precious stone. He's going to get crowns and rewards and inheritance. Be put in good. And God's going to reward him good. Also for the Christian, if he does things for self and, and self-gratification and for the lust and, and, and lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh and the pride of life, and he'll get to heaven with wood, hay, or stubble, and that ends up as ashes. Wood, hay, or stubble is the evil that we've done for ourselves. And not for Jesus Christ. And you're not going to get to heaven. And, and some will. Some probably do expect. But you're not going to get to heaven. And say I serve myself. And God's going to reward you good. That doesn't happen. And yet there are probably people in the church. Somewhere in this world. That you know you take care of yourself. You think of me myself and I. And God will just love you. And God will just take care of you in heaven. That's our old study. Evil is good and good is evil. In Matthew 12, 35, it's repeated. It is not natural for a wicked, evil man to produce good. 
What if an evil man does any good in the eyes of God? There is none that doeth good, especially the wicked man. A wicked man, all right, he's wicked. He's vile. He has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as his payment as the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. He goes to church. So, what? You want God to honor you when you've been wicked by rejecting Jesus Christ? And the world and religion will say yes. And we look over at Psalms chapter 7, verse 11, the Bible says, God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If you're righteous, God will judge you what you did your righteous for. And if it's righteousness for his son and for himself, glory to God, good. But if you're evil and wicked, or as a Christian, you do evil. That just angers God. And the world will come up and say, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. But the sinner is the one that does the sin. And the thinking of that God loves, you know, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. Then the next aspect you're going to get is take everybody out of the jail who's in jail for guilty and let their crimes stay in jail and let them go because the crimes was, you know, put the theft and the murder in the prison and let the person go because you see, it don't work that way. And we find that an evil man with evil treasure produces evil things, plain and simple. Only education would follow it up. Romans 7. Romans 7. And my page is sticking in my Bible, so forgive me. Romans chapter 7. Verse 19. And I'm hoping you see by this study, we're on number 27 right now. I hope you see a good definition. Of what good is and what is evil because the Bible is our standard we will be judged by the Word of God how do I know it's evil what does the Bible say about it well you know style I don't see where I don't see tattoos in the Bible Yes, I do. It's in, it's in the law. Well, we don't follow the law. Okay, we don't follow the law for salvation. But God said, Thou shalt not print any marks upon your flesh. Thou shalt make no cuttings for the dead. And most of your tattoos have to do with skulls and bones and death. When we look at the law, we don't follow the law to a point of salvation, but it must be something for God to say, Thou shalt honor thy mother and father, because it's in both Testament. God must want you to pay attention to your parents. There's a whole book, I think it's Leviticus. You should not see the nakedness of your aunt. You shall not see the nakedness of your brother. You shall not see the nakedness of your mother. You should not see the nakedness of, uh, of your neighbor's wife. You shall not... All right, it, it's... There's a whole chapter, thou shalt not see the naked. Now, that's not in the New Testament. So, because it's in the Old Testament, I can go out and... and... No. The law is a schoolmaster. If God doesn't like it in the Old Testament, I guarantee for sure, unless there, there's an exception written in the epistles to the church, I don't think God would like in this day and age. Like, all right, God told the Jew, honor the Sabbath. You can't find anywhere, and it's against the Sabbath in the church epistles, where it is stated in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. And I believe maybe Paul said a couple places, 
It's the first day of the week. We have scripture to say, okay, as far as the Sabbath, okay, that's done. It's coming back in the tribulation period, but we honor the first day of the week. Romans 7, 19. For the good, I got to read this one slowly. For the good that I would, I do not. Paul's saying there's good things out there. I don't do them. But the evil, which I would not, that I do. Paul says there are sins out there, and guess what? I do them. Paul has acknowledged. He's a sinner. He's a saved sinner. And I've heard Christians, I've heard Christians and ministers, you're not a sinner, you're saved. And why, if we confess our sins, where he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Why is that in there? Because, but the evil which I would not, I don't want to sin, I do. And that which is good, which I, I want to do, I don't do. I sin on both ways. If it's good and I don't do it, I've sinned. And if it's evil, I've done it. I've sinned. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Paul did evil. One of the greatest Christians in the Bible. And he reported himself to do evil. Put me on the spot and I might lie. I'm capable. I gripe and complain. I don't have very good thoughts about some of the brethren. And when it comes to the good, we fail for not doing. And when it comes to the evil doing, we fail by doing evil. I don't know how many times in my Christian walk, plenty, too much, I have talked to somebody, the gospel or Bible, and I've walked away from that conversation in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, 24 hours, a week later. I think of something I should have, I should have been able to know to say at that moment, and I didn't. What was good should have been for that conversation, it waited an hour to maybe a week, maybe a month after that where I should. That's wrong. When I'm, when I'm out in the public and I come to another person and the Lord says, give them a gospel track and I don't have any. The good is giving them a gospel track, not having any. Oh, I want to do good, but I ain't got none, Lord. Or I may size people up, believe it or not. As a street preacher, I may say, Lord, no, not them. It is proper to give someone a gospel track. And it's not proper not to have a gospel track. And it's not proper to, no, Lord, not them. So the basis that Paul writes, evil is an adverse reaction we have against good. You can never at one time be doing evil and do good at the same time. You say, well, okay, what if I put money in a collection plate and you give it with, a, with an improper attitude and you give it grudgingly and Paul wrote to the Corinthians say, God loves a cheerful giver. You're not to give it grudgingly. You put that money in that plate and you're, you're angry because the preacher preached about tithing and you put that money in there because the preacher said to put it in there. You might as well just put the money in your pocket, go home and get yourself a whopper. Because God is not pleased with you putting money in the plate. Doing good by giving to the church, but you give it with an evil heart. God's like, I don't want it.
Those Pharisees were giving money in the treasury, left and right, left and right. And they were doing it with an evil conscience and an evil heart, with evil motives. And that widow woman went up there with her pure heart, gave God everything she had. And God recognized her. You cannot get away with witnessing to lost people with the worldly means. It's not going to work. And it's sorry that you're going to find out at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment when it's too late to realize you're in the era. You cannot use evil and you cannot do good when it comes to soul winning. And it's happening in the churches today. That if it is not for God, it is evil. And that which is for God is good. We want to do good. And yet more the evil comes into action. And the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 3, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil. Because I'm more prone to do evil and the good. And as Christians and as Paul, then maybe you're better than Paul. Some people think they are better than Paul. I met them. Paul says there was something good I wanted to do. And I sinned against God because I didn't do it. And Paul said there was a sin that I know. And I've done it. And what greater source of evil... Then James chapter 3 says, the evil of our tongue. <coughs> our little muscle that sleeps, that never sleeps, or grows. It never tires from the comments of good and evil. He even uses the expression, salt and, and fresh water. And yet our tongues, our tongues are the exception to the rule because it does evil and it does good. And it does good and it does evil. I think James says, we bless God and something with the brethren. That's wrong. And Paul is saying, hey, everything I've done is good. It's good. Everything I've done that's evil is evil and then the third aspect is I wanted to do good and I didn't do good that's evil and I wanted to do the evil I didn't want to do the evil but I end up doing the evil that's evil and evil would we would to do good but we do evil Salvation, I don't care how many years you've been saved, you're still going to sin, and the day you stop sin is the day they bury you in the ground or the rapture happens. And we have for the case that when we do sin, John writes, he says, my brother, son, sin not. And if we sin, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 7.21 I find then a law. Ooh. But we weren't under the law. I find a law that when I would do good evil is present in me. Whoa. And you can read Galatians 5, 16 to 26, and we won't read it today. Evil is in our nature. We are born in sin. That's why I don't celebrate birthday. I don't celebrate the day I was born, the old man, the old nature. I don't celebrate the day that I was born into troubles as the spark flies upward. I celebrate uh, April 25th 
1987, the day I became a new creature, the day I became born again, the day I became adopted to the Holy Spirit, to God the Father through Jesus Christ. I'll celebrate that day. If you are to be the greatest good person, and in you is that very evil that condemns us before God. I didn't read completely, but the, the life of Mother Teresa, the world lifts Mother Teresa up as a good person. And some of the things I, I heard and read, she wasn't always that good. And I have been told she had had hatred in her heart. Though the world won't tell you to have hatred. And when you read the stories of the spouses and the bodyguards and the people who work with your entertainers of movies and television or music and fame or sports, and you will find out that in their private life, they are not so lovable and so great that they were on the screen or on the playing field. I'm thinking about one actor right now, and he starred in a lot of programs. He had a great uh, TV, couple TV series, and they say the guy was miserable off the camera. He would not even acknowledge his fans. And when his fans write him a letter, say, can I have your autograph? He would definitely, most likely say, no, I don't give autograph. And me, I love the Lord. I want to do right. And I want to tell the lost people about, about Jesus. I want to grow Christians. And yet inside me that you don't know about, there are things in me. There's evil. And if you were to know the evil that I think or do, as if I were to know the evil that you do and think, you, you would not have or want the fellowship or the care of my presence. The world is ever present to help the inner self to do evil. And they use their greatest tool called advertising. Advertising is the greatest tool for the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes. Why do they think that they put those half-naked women on the things that men like? What does a half-dressed woman sitting on the hood of a car, what's that have to do with selling a car? It gets the fleshy desires of that man to look upon her and lust and to commit adultery. What is the advertising that when they use plastic and, and lipstick and glue and they don't use a real hamburger and bun on the screen, but they use artificial ingredients to do whatever they can do to make that hamburger look nice and juicy. So you'll say, I got to go run down and get me that hamburger. The lust of the flesh. I remember one time when I worked for a fast food restaurant. I, I So many times people come to the drive-thru. They come up to the counter. I just saw it on TV. I got to have it. I say, okay. Myself or one, one of my co-workers co would go and make that product. And they bring that product, and we ring it up, and they open up. And say, well, it don't look like that on TV. No, it don't. We are born with a sin nature, thanks to Adam and Eve. Why do they do that? Because it's in their nature. It's in their heart. We've already looked at that from Luke. That was Luke chapter... 6 verse 45 out of the evil heart comes evil treasure an evil person romans 9 11. <clears throat> and yes a christian is capable of evil a christian can murder somebody 
Yes, he can. That don't stop him going from heaven. A Christian can cheat. It's a terrible thing. And it doesn't stop him from going to heaven. Just because your little darling is a Christian doesn't mean there's not going to be a little devil. Romans 9, 11. For the children, being not yet born, Esau and Jacob, having, neither, having done, neither having done any good or evil. You see that? We're going to stop there. We're talking about in the womb of a woman, and that's a great subject today, pro-life and anti-life and Paul the Apostle and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit says that that baby, whether it be one baby, twins, triplets, quadruplets, or however, because there was a time that Jesus and the disciples came across a blind man, I believe it was. I believe he was blind. And I believe Peter said, Jesus, or one of the disciples said, Jesus, who had sinned? This man, his parents or him, that he was born blind. And the standard teaching of the rabbis were at that time, where if you were born with a defect, it's because your parents sinned. Or there was another teaching is you were born blind because you sinned in the womb. Two aspects. And Paul writes on an inspiration of the Holy Spirit saying that two, two children, two sons, in the womb, Esau turned out to be wicked, Jacob turned out to be a, a, a used camel salesman. Neither had done good or evil. In the womb of a woman, a mother, there is no doing good and there's no doing evil. That don't happen until you're born. So what happens to a child that is still born? He dies in the womb. There's no charge of there's no charge of guilt. There's no charge of sin. There's no charge of evil. They go to glory. Aborted babies go to glory. A miscarriage goes to glory. My wife, Lisa, had a miscarriage. She named that child Philip. That child did no good and it did no evil. That child died in the womb. And that child went to glory. There is no active sinning in the womb. And then there is a cause after the after the child is born. Age of innocence, which who knows what that age is for the particular child. But there can be a child, a time that that child will die. And if he has no knowledge of his sinning against God and accountability of that sin, he will die and go to glory without being charged with evil or good or sin. That's a whole other subject. So there is no active sinning in the womb. John chapter 9 verse 2 and James chapter 4 verse 17. Romans chapter 12 verse 9. And you know what? There's going to be many people who have said and they're going to disagree. That's not what I was taught. I had one man tell me one time, what's well, uh, uh, men taught me this. Well, the Bible says this. You're wrong. The Bible's correct. All right. Romans 12, 9. Let love without dis dismiliation. I'm saying that word wrong. That's a false pretense. Hip hypocrisy. Abhor extreme hatred. 
that which is evil, and cleave, glue yourself to that which is good. How do you know what's good? What's your Bible say? How do you know what's evil? What's the Bible say? I've had people tell me, they'll come up to me, I'm witnessing. I'm a good person. I'll look at them in the face. I'll say, no, you're not. There's none that do is good. No, not one. Oh, I am too a good person. Not according to the Bible. First question, number one, have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? I, I don't need that. Then you're not good according to the Bible. And you've got to get the whole Bible, Genesis, Genesis to Revelation, to find out what is good and what's not good. And to find out what is evil and what's not evil. A point of the church in the Corinthian church in Corinth was a man was having relations of fornication with his, his father's wife. And the church is like, ooh, that's it. And Paul's like, hey, hey, there's sin going on. You're the hate with the utmost hatred of all hatreds of evil. And let me tell you that there is evil in the churches today of worldliness and sinfulness, and they glorify it like the Corinth church. I'm surprised for our church age, instead of Laodicean, I'm surprised it wasn't called the church of Corinth. Yeah, I believe, and this could be thrown in the garbage, but I believe I know why it was called Laodicea, not Corinth. Because in 2 Corinthians, the church of Corinth got correct. And this church age of Laodicea is not going to get correct. It's only going to get the worst. And they're going to think they're the best and they're the greatest. We're the wonderful one, and yet we're poor, naked. We are poor, naked, miserable, blind. What God says. We have to know what good, we have to know what's evil, and we're going to have to give an account, and there's only one account that tells us what is good, what is evil, and that's this Holy King James 1611 Scripture. And we can't do good and evil at the same time, and we can't do evil and good at the same time. We cannot preach out of the pulpits of the world today, preach the name of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus in a modern Bible. You can't do it. Oh, I know it's done. But when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, not approved. Well, we got games and carnivals and great times in the church. And you're going to find yourself with wood, hay, or stubble. I know everybody don't believe that, but I do. I believe with a conviction. <clears throat> and it's in our nature. We were born in sin. And then we are when we became saved and we were given we were born again and we were adopted by God. And we've given the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, all oh, that I want to do which is good, I don't do it. And that which is evil, oh, I do it. And John says, sin not. But if a man sin, if the brethren sin, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did that word come out of my mouth? Because you put it, an evil man and an evil treasure and out of the evil heart. <clears throat> How do I get those, those evil thoughts? How do I get those evil words out of my heart? You get the good treasure of a good man and the good heart by reading the scriptures daily. That's how you do it. 